What works? Language, literacy and numeracy in training and assessment. This is team teaching, so it's not one person being dominant. It, it's using both people's strengths to enable there to be a better outcome for the students. The best thing is, is my students, I believe, they get the best of both worlds. They get, uh, they get an expert in one field, they get an expert in another field. And we can marry the two together so they can see the relevance in what they're doing. And if there's two people that are working in the room together, it helps if those two people that are working in the room together don't want to be the leader or don't want to be the star. The information and the students are what you're there for, not, hey, I look better than you or you're making me look bad. Originally, when I started, the vocational teacher did all the delivery and I used to walk around the room and just assist the students. Occasionally, um, if I saw something looked a little bit confusing on the board, I would say, oh, look, do you mind if I, I might have another way that you could do it as well, or you might prefer this way, or just little things like that. So I slowly started to get involved. That actually takes the load off, OK? I don't have to worry about individual students. And the individual students know that our literacy or slash numeracy teachers are in the room for their benefit. And so they know, and if I'm busy doing, you know, the lesson and they're unsure about something, well, they can go directly to the numeracy teacher without disturbing the rest of the class because we're all the, the students are at different levels of, of the numeracy and slash literacy. Um, so it's a good thing. Well, the LLN teacher were delivering a lesson and I oh, might be talking about trigonometry on how to work out a taper. Then they would interject and say, OK, so you remember when we talked about trigonometry and transposing this formula? And they would jump in and then they would put their mathematical spin back on it again. Wait for a pause in what they're doing and then I might jump in and put our uh, trade spin on it. Getting those basic skills in the context that they need. So, I mean, if you teach maths or numeracy on its own, they're just going to think, well, why are we doing this? We've, you know, we might have done it at school and when are we going to need it? But if you combine the skills of both teachers, learning what they need to learn and really understanding it by going back to the fundamentals, getting both sides of things and getting the skills from both teachers. If a student's struggling I would have an individual approach and then I would speak to them after the lesson and say would you like a little bit more attention or is there something you don't understand why don't you understand it how can we help we decide who's going to deliver the lesson basically the other person's there to support them but if Regina was explaining something and the students are looking at her as like they're not understanding what's going on she might just say to me can you explain Maybe you've got a different way of getting the point across to them. Or I'd be saying something and she'd say, they're not understanding that. Maybe you mean you should be doing this. It was just one of those things where we just worked. Always very positive, yeah. I, I always ran it by the teacher, for, you know, like, what do you think? I think they're a little bit confused. I'm, do you mind if I make up a revision sheet? And I'd go up and show it before the lesson as well and I'd say, what do you think of this? Is there anything you want it to add or is it too much? And, you know, so I always made sure at the end of the day it's their class and um, checked that they were happy with what I was putting in there. And then just slowly somehow I started delivering a lot of the lesson. I think the teachers felt more comfortable with me just going up there and especially the first half where it's all mathematical, you know, perimeter area volume, they see it's my area. It's having that level of respect and confidence in what you're doing and to be able to just pick up when you know in the classroom perhaps if um, I'm with a teacher that says oh how do you do that Jane you know Jane's better to do this so I'll just go up and just take over for five minutes or whatever and just give this concept um, that they're having difficulty with. We just interact we just I, I will just I'll be delivering something and I'll just look to the teacher and say is that all? Have I missed, missed anything out? Do you want to add anything to that? Occasionally I'll say, oh, do you want to introduce the topic? Have you introduced it before I get here? And then they will have done that and then I'll step in halfway through the lesson. It's somebody else. They get rid of that boring person which is just teaching them carpentry all the time 
to someone who's a little bit different comes in the room and it breaks the session up, it breaks the day up and it delivers in a different method to them. The most common comment will be it's great having two teachers there because we get more attention that way. Another comment is we like having two teachers because you explain it differently so we get two different approaches and uh, most of the students uh, will actually write down when they find out that we don't team teach in second year they'll say uh, it must be extended into second year, you know, or we want Reggie or things like that. At the end, when you've got students thanking you, ringing you up or emailing you uh, and telling what a fantastic year they've had and, you know, they couldn't have got through without that help, it's proved it's worked.